So there is a new trait in America that has started to emerge since the turn of the millennium, a trait that our country has not seen before, the trait of not being consent with, uh, content with yourself and society. Time Magazine says that 43% of young men between the age of 18 and 34 are living at home, the highest level since 1940. And the Huffington Post said that college graduates are, uh, in their 20s are stuck at low-wage, dead-end jobs, with a large number of them below the poverty line of $25,000. So what happened to the American dream of a prosperous future, a nice family? Why is it that the Business Insider says that young people are much worse off than their parents? Why is it that nearly half my generation sounds completely hopeless? I think I can answer these questions. Too many kids are just towing the line, conforming to the standard, to, just to get through high school, then go through college to get that degree in some mediocre college, like in some ridiculous major like these up here. You guess you can actually major in David Beckham studies. <laughs> um, the kids that do succeed are the ones that set themselves apart, which is completely different narrative than the doom and gloom that we hear about our generation. These kids didn't just go to class each day and absorb nothing like a drone. They actually did something outside the classroom. Now to get personal. Two years ago, when I was a sophomore, I found myself being a statistic. Another kid with average grades that'll probably end up in a mediocre college. This fact depressed me. I can't remember a time where school wasn't a struggle for me. Growing up, I could barely spell or read, and my mother, out of principle, refused to take me to the doctor to see if I was dyslexic, like the school suggested. I struggled in middle school, barely pulling off a C average in Spanish, and then again in high school, because I could barely spell in English, let alone a second language. Yep. I looked back on the past, <laughs> then I just shared with you, and told myself that this just getting by mindset could not go on. I found what I was interested in, business and finance, and I started to jump inside the business world. At first, I started up an eBay store, selling old iPhones like you see up there, and old textbooks and video game consoles, and really anything of value that you could be bought for a low price and flip for hundreds online. After I had a little bit of uh, $20,000 and 800 in sales, I decided that it was time to push my passion and drive it even further. I started researching about the stock market as I, as I opened up a sub-account under my father. After spending a little time learning everything, I started trading the riskiest stuff that the market had to offer, options contracts, derivatives, futures, and even foreign exchange. And in the summer of 2014, I took $1,600 of my profits and turned it into a whopping $400, a loss of 75%. But you've heard the saying that, if at first you don't succeed. So I didn't stop there. I didn't simply cut my losses. Instead, I picked myself up and pushed even harder. I watched those cheesy shows on CNBC, a financial channel, maybe like three to four hours every day, read articles online recommended to me by traders, and downloaded eBooks like Option Trading for Dummies. And yes, I actually read a four dummies book to get started. I eventually became successful and proved myself with a successful trading record. In January of this year, I documented my trades online in a day trading forum called Wall Street Bets on Reddit. The title of my first post read, so I had $900 left in one of my accounts and decided to YOLO it. And YOLO is a term tossed around the forum when you're basically throwing dead money on a trade that probably doesn't have a good chance to come, tr uh, come true. So it shows me $900 here, up close, and then 4,000 in just one day. So then, again, the next post, the next day, reads, I decide to YOLO again with the 4K from yesterday, and here it is, up close. $9,400, and then actual trades that I did here. And then, a couple trades later, next day, next day, next day again, And then, the high, and then to this post, which was the highest rated, most viewed post on the forum still to this day, which read, YOLO $900 to $55,000 in just 12 days. You could say I was a little excited, and the story didn't even end there. And this is it up close. 
And then the, the store didn't even end there. I ended up having $122,000 by the end of the month and me posting pictures of the final account value, an amount transferred to cash, and me even funding some of uh, one of my family members' retirement accounts that says IRA, which is a retirement account. So this all seems like a good college essay, huh? Now back to my background, to the, uh, no, now, now enough with my background. Let's go back to the opening point of a new trade in America, the trait of not being content with yourself. As I see it, you have two choices in life. You can just sit around, keep following the standard path in life, or you can try and make something of your dreams. I went with the second option. Before I dove into business, I texted my cousin while I was in that depression phase two years ago. I sent him, I need a business plan, a purpose to get my life back on track. He sent back, here it is, go to college, work a minimum wage job, get degree, get real job, work till you die. That's the business plan. It sounded depressing, so I sent back, no, that, that sounds like an average life. And quickly, right away, he sent back, average is what life becomes. You work your nine to five, you go home, you pay your bills, you go back to work, you die. This conversation uh, pissed me off more than it should have, and that day I printed out that conversation and kept it, and it's still on my desk to this day. It's what sparked me to go out and find my business passion. Now, if that type of life sounds just as bad as it did to me, I encourage you to pick up that guitar, pick up that paintbrush, or pick up that computer, because now more than ever, through technology, you can educate yourself and set yourself apart from the crowd. If you find yourself stuck in a liminal space between your dreams and the status quo, as I was, go out and truly follow your passion, because if we, special, if we all specialize what we're best in, we can truly restore the American dream and fix this problem that is plaguing our youth. All it takes is a little motivation, and maybe, just maybe, you can turn your passions into profits. Thank you.